So I just repeated Erdős Corrado theorem. And uh, I started the, the second proof with a lemma. So now uh, we have a order, ordering of the elements from 1 to n, and we'll say the cycle. And uh, G is a family of, of uh, intervals of length k. Again, it is less than n half, less than equal n half. And that an intersecting so we just mimic Erdős Corrado theorem for this uh, structure and and I proved actually that uh, the family cannot have more than k elements. So we, we, we proved this at the very end. And uh, using this, I want to prove the erdős corrado theorem. Double counting Uh, C and uh, F, where C is a cyclic permutation of N. So he, here I made this order, one, two, three. But now we will take all possible ordering. So mix, mix them. 177, 82, and so on. So this is an element of C. F is in the family, the intersecting family from the theorem. Interval in C. Uh, maybe it's not clever to write a script letter, but I hope you don't mind. So it's, this is one ordering, and it, F is taken from the family. So imagine that you mi we mix the elements, the members of F, and some of them become intervals here. Some of them don't. So at this moment, we just consider those which become intervals in this cyclic ordering. And uh, double counting means that uh, that uh, we fix one side and then fix the other side. So try first with fixing F. So it, it is a member of the original family. Oh, so it's one of them, <laughs> yeah. So it's one of the intersecting families. And now we try to mix the elements in a cyclic way. And 
So, so we, we know that the number of f is just a notation. So this is the size of the family. And uh, for each such set, we have to determine in how many times we can order, how many cyclic orderings we can have where f is an interval. So if f is an interval, then and, and this is the rest. So how many ways we can or put here the elements? Since this is cyclic, it doesn't matter where we, we put f. But so uh, if we want to have f as an interval, then we can mix only these elements. In how many ways? Of course, k factorial is the number of ways mixing these elements. And then we have to mix the other ones. So that will be n minus k factorial. So we know that the number of such pairs is exactly this number. So now try to fix the cyclic permutation. So we are now here, and we consider the members of f, which are intervals in this cyclic ordering. And uh, we, we cannot tell how many of the, uh, the members f will be uh, intervals here. But we, we know that we cannot have more than k, because they are intersecting also. So because the f's are intersecting, then their maps here are also intersecting. And by the lemma, we know that it cannot be uh, more than uh, k. And so first, I write uh, the number of cyclic permutations. And uh, so k is the largest value. So typically, for a, a g, for one cyclic permutation, we have a number which is at, a, a less than or equal to k. So if we write k here, then we get an inequality. And uh, so what we obtained is uh, n minus 1 factorial over, we can divide by k. So we get k minus 1 factorial n minus k factorial, and this is really m minus 1 choose k minus 1. Question? So yeah, this is definitely shorter than the original proof, but this transformation, this uh, shift is very important. And there are deeper theorems, more difficult theorems, where you cannot do anything this, this, this method. But using the shift, you can get many, many more uh, results. But now I want to show you some other uh, uh, situations where the, the cyclic method of cyclic permutations is uh, useful. Uh, I don't know, it, it's, I call it a proposition. Mm. 
Yeah, young people typically don't distinguish between proposition and lemma. And uh, so I think uh, the, the best uh, way to distinguish is when proposition is when it's very easy to prove, but it's going along the main line. So it's an important result in the theory. Then it's but easy to prove. That's the proposition. A lemma is like this one. Then it, 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 it somehow it, it, it's different. It's, it doesn't say anything about real families of subsets. So, yeah. So proposition is that uh, I, I write it very shortly in Sperner's theorem. The only <coughs> external families are Actually, we, we, we have seen that uh, this, this is true for the case where n is even, because this pushing to the middle, it, it always increased the number of sets, that is so strictly uh, increased. So we arrived to this one. But in this case, it was a so we, we, we were able to go to these two levels, but we didn't know about it between the two levels. So the only uh, situation could have happened that some of these and some of these. And now I prove that this is not possible. Again, we take These pairs, yeah, C is a cyclic permutation. I don't write it down again. But uh, so F, mm, yeah, so F, F is the family. <laughs> Satisfying the Sperner. And uh, F is in the family, and it's an interval along C. So we, we do the same thing again, that we mix the elements in, in a cyclic way, and we consider those uh, members of the family which become an interval here. Yeah, this looked easy in the previous case. And uh, this is true again, basically the same. Just uh, we have to write now f factorial that because uh, the, the the sizes are different. So this is the number of pairs because uh, yeah. 
So it, the sa same calculation works. So we fix the interval, and then we mix the elements within f and outside f. But now, uh, again, the number of cyclic permutations is n minus 1 factorial. But what can we say about the maximum of the, of the numbers of uh, intervals? In uh, along the cycle, yeah. I, I asked the audience. So, what is the maximum number? <laughs> of course, Sperner property has to be satisfied. So, no subset is a subset of the other one. Question. So along the cycle, we have intervals of different lengths. And no one is contained in another one as a subset. What is the maximum number of such subsets? So the Sperner theorem asked for the cycle. Little help. <laughs> so I, I, I consider two sets starting from the same point. Can we have both of them? No, because this is a subset of this one. So we can have only one set for every point. So we cannot have more than n. And can we have n sets? All sets of the same size, they are good so for, for any k, all k element subsets, except 0 and n, because there is only one. So we have n. And uh, this inequality So what did we get here? We uh, so this is n n, fact, n factorial, and we divide this by this side. This side, then I'm um, sorry. No, we we, we have to uh, sum these. Uh, no, it's, we, we, because it depends on the sizes here. So, uh, so this side is, uh, uh, okay, so uh, this, was, this was wrong here, this f, I'm sorry. Because, uh, so, so when we fix one f, then 
we get different numbers. So it's a sum. So this is, this is an error here. So this is the correct one. So for every f, we calculate how many uh, cyclic permutations are there, where f is an interval. And now what we obtained, dividing by n factorial, we obtain some You can check it. It's correct. So we, we divide it here by n factorial, we get 1. And here we have the reciprocal value of n choose f size. And so from here, we can get again. Uh, so this is, we, we have proved this actually before. The YBLM inequality, or LYM, if you, if you prefer. So we have this inequality if we replace every term by the smallest one, which means when this is the largest, so the middle one. And then we, have, we obtain that f is at most this one. So now you can say, oh, we didn't get anything new. We proved the same thing as uh, in the Lubel's proof. But now we are able to uh, determine the extremal families. Namely, we follow where we have equality. So here at that point, we have equality if we have n here for every f. So you, I recall we fixed an f. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, fix a, a cyclic permutation, not an f. A cyclic permutation, and we know that we cannot have more than n intervals along the cyclic permutation. And we, this was a maximum. But we have in a strict equality here only if we have n sets. So if. then uh, we must have exactly n intervals for every c. So now we, so it means that we need a set starting from every point. Because there are n points, and we have seen that from one point, we cannot have two, because then one will be a subset of the other one. So let uh, uh, if B i is the interval starting 
from i. So name them. So this is i, and this is b i. Of course, uh, here we always mix the element, but uh, for the moment we we suppose that they are indexed one from one to n. It doesn't make any difference, just it would be very complicated to use many indices. So what can we say about uh, the size of B i and B i plus 1? I, I need an inequality. I don't, I don't hear it. Uh, bi is at least bi is plus one. The same, you said? No. no. I did hear the, the, the crucial word. At least. At least, yeah. Yeah. So if, so th this is bi and B, B i plus 1 starts from here. If it's 1 less, then uh, so this is less than this one, one, only one already, this will be a subset of the other one. So it means that it has to be at least this much. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, finished the lemma, I, I started the proof, that, but uh, now I, 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 I can uh, finish the statement. Uh, then, uh, and yeah, so, so uh, here I should have written from 1 to n. So that's very important that we have n such sets exactly. And uh, then so this is the statement that uh, they all have the same size. Why? Because we can continue this. to be n, because it, it's same, same is true at every step. But it's also true for b n, that uh, b n should be less than b 1. Because otherwise, if b n is, uh, b 1 is shorter than b n, Bn is going like that, and B1 is shorter by 1, then it will be a subset. And we started from B1, and so you can see that uh, this implies that uh, they, they are all the same. So, we have proved something stronger that even in this, this inequality, we can have uh, we can have equality, exact equality only if they all have the same size. So uh, Oh, I, di I didn't finish yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I'm too fast. 
so now we know that they are all equal along one cyc cyclic permutation. But uh, for different ones, we could have a different size. So by the lemma, we know that they are equal. But we take another cyclic permutation, then they can be different. So they are five, and the other one, all, all the 10 element sets. So we have to prove that, uh, so this is lemma one, lemma two. Is uh, that uh, um, if C1 and C2 are two cyclic permutations, then the members being intervals in them are Ha have then um, uh, th uh, then all of them have the same size so so for for one we know that they have the same size for this one we also no, I'm sorry, telephone. <laughs> so for the other one, we also have the same size. But we, but we don't know if th they are the same, th these, these constants. And uh, take. Uh, So, so take uh, any two mm, uh, I, I didn't formulate it very 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 well so so when we have f it is true but I, I, I will prove something different <laughs> so we have two L members so now this is this is a C. This is a C, and uh, suppose that two members are in uh, in this cyclic permutation. They they have um, yeah. So we, we have uh, this one, and uh, take such a C. that f1 and f2 are intervals it's easy to to do we just fix the intersection so this is the intersection and okay once more so this will be the intersection this will be f1 minus f2 this part and this part is f2 minus f1 so we order 
the elements in this way. So two sets, intersection, and, and, and all these things are defined in the original set. And then we order them, we start the cyclic permutation in this way. And then the rest is not important. And we know that uh, the sets along this permutation, cyclic permutation, what we obtained in this way, all the intervals have the same size. And this is one cyclic permutation. And we have two two intervals from a family. So we, we have, uh, we obtain from this lemma, we obtain that they must be of the same size. So, so now I arrive to this point really. Uh, so this, inequ this equality here in the, this inequality, if we have equality, e exact equality, then uh, it means that uh, all Fs have the same size so and then if we want to get equality here also then we we have uh, we must have that f is either this one so this this common f is either this one or that one if uh, you take a, a a different value then it will be different here so this this is the case yeah so in, in the case of even we i have I have told that uh, we don't need a proof, but it, it works also here that the, uh, if uh, you have here exactly n half, then you, have, you must have f, all f's uh, to have the same size also. Now, uh, I show you another proof using this idea with a little bit spiced So you understand that the sets are, any two sets are intersecting. The intersection is not empty. And no one is a subset of the other one. So first we excluded this one. In second, we excluded this one. And now we exclude both of them. Any suggestion? N 
n choose n half is uh, well, how you take all n half element sets. Then you will get disjoint ones. But but then you don't use all the elements. Uh, that will be too too small. Yeah, the two cases they are, but you you can formulate it in one statement in even or odd case. About so so the the first sum which is more than than half. And this, this can be expressed in this way. So when n is even, then it means n half plus 1. And since they have the same size, uh, this cannot happen. And because they are too big, this cannot happen either. And if uh, n is odd, then again, because the sum of two such thing is more than n. And, and of course, this is sharp, because if you take these sets, then uh, they will satisfy the conditions. And uh, so the new trick is now we need again a lemma for the cycle. But first, I show you what uh, no, no, I start with the lemma. So C cyclic permutation and uh, yeah, so I have the, is the family. But now the double, double counting is, will be somewhat different with a weight. So And uh, I have to improve my memory. So and and uh, so if we have uh, uh, B one, B two, B R. intervals in C, but of course, they are all in the family. But here, we, so it's, in, it's a intersecting. So th this is, sorry, and uh, it's better to write here, intersecting Sperner. So the same condition as in the theorem. We have for the intervals, but we, we need names this, this time because it's more uh, complicated. So we take. I, 
write in this stupid way. So what I mean, we take double counting where instead of what, so for every pair, every pair C, B, we, in the previous proofs, we took only one. And here for every pair, we add a weight function, a weight, and this will be the weight. So basically, the same thing, the double counting, but with the weight. And uh, so the lemma claims that uh, this is at most this much. So can, can we have this much? Yes, if we, we have, uh, we take all sets of this size, so same size, again, they will form an intersecting sper sperner. Actually, uh, some people say sperner in an English way, but uh, I think uh, the right way is to, to, to uh, call everybody by his real, real original pronunciation, and he was German. So and in German, S, SP, when, when it starts with S and continues with P, then you pronounce it sh, not s. <laughs> of course, my, my pronunciation is not real German, it's the Hungarian approximation. <laughs> Okay, so, so, so you see, when r is n, and we have all sets of this size, then all of these terms will be equal to this one. And since this is n, we, we have equality. So we can reach this. So we have to prove that we cannot have more than this. So we uh, we have to distinguish two cases here. When uh, R is equal to N. So then we know that uh, one B, we have a B starting from every point. They might be of different sizes, but we just proved before that uh, all Bs have the same size. So it means that this, the sum, will be n choose k. So this is the sum on the right hand side, oh, I'm sorry, left hand side. And uh, we have n terms, and so we, we take this to be the maximum. 
So if uh, yeah, uh, one thing I forgot. So, so the maximum could be, OK, I, I write it here first. So if n is even, we, we obtain this one. But this is impossible, because if k is n half, then we have these two sets. We, we, we must have a, a, a set starting from every point. So we have these two, which, is, which are disjoint. So this cannot be, so k cannot be n half. And then we take the second largest value of n choose k, and uh, when n is even, then it is, is it still there? Yeah. Then this is the second largest one. And if n is odd, then we can take the largest one. But uh, k, this case is somewhat different when r is not equal to n. Then, uh, then we, we, we cannot say that they have the same size. But we, we can try to maximize these weights. So the best thing would be to take and half everywhere. But as I mentioned here, uh, this is impossible that uh, you, you uh, uh, oh, oh, sorry. It's impossible to have too many of them. So n half elements sets along the cycle, how many we can have. And half. Yeah, so containing this point, they are OK. And uh, so because uh, for every pair, every such pair, we can have only one. So you order them by pairs, and you can have at most one out of each pair. So we, we can have. Uh, this many of uh, of the largest possible, uh, and the rest, which is n r minus n half, is smaller. Oh, I forgot to tell you before that uh, the whole theorem is trivial when n is uh, odd. Because already the Sperner property says this, that you cannot have more in the family, then n choose this number. So we 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 have to consider only the even case. And this is why I wrote here n half. So, so we have r 
members are terms here. So the other ones can be a little bit less. Here, here I could have written minus 1 is the same thing. But because of the result, it looks better to write 1. So this is uh, the second best. And take the largest possible value for r. Uh, because uh, hmm. uh, mm -mm. yeah, I understand. You also understand <laughs> why we cannot have more for this, why we cannot have more than this one. Because if it's equal, R, this, this, this is n, then R is, I'm sorry, if this is n half, then R is n. And this was the previous case. So R, n is less than n, uh, 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 less than equal to n minus 1. So the largest value is n minus 1 minus n half, this. And it's easy calculation that uh, this is n it's elementary uh, calculation that th th these are equal. So now we proved the lemma only. And uh, now we do the, the uh, double counting, really. So now I uh, go back to uh, B is OK. So, so now we uh, uh, no, no, because B was only along the cycle. And here we have uh, members of the of the original family. So it's, I don't see why I have in indices here. So, so, so this is what, what I, I was telling earlier, that we make the double counting with the weight. So we, we, we take this sum for every such pair, where C is a cyclic permutation, F is from the family, and uh, C is, uh, sorry, and is a, an interval. Along. C.
So we do the same thing as before, that uh, C, F, and choose F. We can do in two different ways the sum. So we, oh, I like this order here. Yeah. So in this case, the double counting means that we take two different orders of the, of the summation. So this one here, C is fixed. Then, uh, Hmm. Uh, no, I, I better start with this. I'm sorry. This is where. No. <laughs> uh. Yeah. This, this is the one, okay, <laughs> sorry. So first, we think that f is fixed. And then take this sum. This sum is just trivial, because this number is the same for every term. We just have to calculate how many cyclic permutations are there, how many times we take this. And this is like before it is an summing for, for f. And uh, so what happens if we take this one, so now C is fixed. Then we have this sum. And uh, so the, the set Fs are intersecting Spurner family along a given cycle. So we can use the lemma that uh, this can be replaced by n times n choose Of course, now we have to multiply this by n minus 1 factorial. Something is not clear. This is good. Sorry? For drive units, you have always permutations. 
Yes. Sorry? Only this permutation would contain F. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So when uh, so 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 this is wrong here. Because now we fixed I, I wrote here F is fixed, but I didn't use it. So we, we don't have all n minus one factorial ones, we did many times how many cyclic permutations we have where f is an interval that was f factorial times n minus f factorial. And this is sum for f and this cancels out so we get n factorial and uh, so since it's a constant we have size of f times n factorial so I, I repeat what we obtained so this is n factorial here times oh yeah, the, so w w when I r wrote it here I, I should have uh, deleted the sum so n uh, choose n plus 1 ceiling so this is the left hand side and the right hand side is and uh, well, 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 again a sum we don't we don't need the sum I am writing nonsense so the we don't have any sum right because uh, so this was the maximum of this sum and then this many times we had to do, do uh, take this and so we, we obtained n factorial here and this was n factorial times f and so we obtained that uh, f is at most uh, this one so I have 10 minutes oh, 12 oh, oh I wanted to tell much more I I think I tell you only a result without proof, of course. So you remember the when F consisted of k element subset, then we defined the shadow. k minus 1 element subset deleting 1, 1, 1 element from each member. So this was the shadow. And uh, so we have seen that the shadow is I repeat the proof because there are some people who were not here in the first class so for each member each k element set we can delete one element in k different ways but in this way we can obtain the same k minus one element set in many times at most how many times as, as many times we have an element outside because so if, if the k element set is this one plus a point then we obtain this one and this number is n minus k plus one and uh, 
So now I, I want to show you that uh, this, this was useful in Sperner's original theorem, but it's too weak. It's very, very weak. Because if k is fixed and n tends to infinity, then it tends to 0 for, for given f and given size of uh, sets and uh, uh, given k, which is, you, you can see that it, it's not, it cannot be true. Uh, to have a feeling, try to think about the case uh, k equals 2. So what is the question is uh, minimum of the shadow when n is given, k is given, and uh, the size of f. So we know how many sets we have. This is, this is not a question. And we, we have this lower bound, but this is, this is not good. What, this is what I claim. So what do you think if k is 2? So we have actually a graph. We know the number of edges. And the shadow is the non-isolated non points, because you, you delete one endpoint of each edge. So the non-isolated points. So try to think a, a second what could be the, the best in this case. So we want to minimize the, the number of isolated points in a graph when we know the edges, number of edges. Sorry? Square root of 2f? Uh, <laughs> yes, it's, it's kind of true. But so it, it's a, uh, the, the construction I, wa I wanted to hear. So it's a complete graph. And uh, you, you didn't say the complete graph, because if the number of edges is not, not in the form a choose 2, then we cannot do it. But uh, so when three edges, when four edges, we can do this. But five edges, six edges, this is the minimum. And then we continue in this way. So between two complete graphs, we, we you can make an almost complete graph when, when this is not n choose 2. And we can imitate this. when the size of f is equal to h is k. So it's a nice number. Then So you take an A element set and all K element subsets, and then deleting the elements one by one, you get all K minus one element sets. So you, you can construct this. And this is true, that uh, you, you cannot have a, a smaller number than this one. But what happens if we are not so lucky?
integers <clears throat> then there is a, a unique expansion of M of this form. So, so it, it, it's kind of homework for when you study binomial coefficients, probably it's the first year. So you, you, can, you can prove. So what, we trying to, what are we trying to do? That if we are not so lucky that something choose k, then start with this. And we do the same thing with the rest. So this is the remaining. And then we take a new point here and take those k element sets which have k minus 1 here and this one. And then this gives you take a subset here. And you take, so this the original size was a k. And this subset has size k minus 1, a k minus 1. And you take all k minus 1 element sets plus this one. So, so this is why we have it. And, and these conditions uh, are needed to have uh, unicity. So. And then uh, so this is the shadow theorem. If so, I denote it by M because uh, I have this expansion, then uh, sigma F is at least a k choose k minus 1 plus a k minus 1 choose k minus 2 plus a t, a t choose t minus 1. So from this, we did made this one. And we do the same thing with the whole uh, sum, that we decrease the lower part everywhere. And uh, and this is what I I will not prove in fifty seconds. So actually, people are still trying shorter and shorter proofs to find shorter proofs. But uh, even the shortest one is not not easy. So thank you. <laughs>